David, we're in the centre of London again, and yeah. cricket meets opera. A, a new thing for you? Uh, yeah, sometimes it has, actually. I would have to say on, on reflection over the number of years, but uh, uh, fantastic setting. Uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, Tim's... Uh, connection with Wormsley and, and Opera is a, is a perfect match, really. So uh, it's one of the most beautiful grounds to play cricket on. So it all really fits together very nicely. A perfect match, you say. You know, sort of Opera. It's you know excellent performances from uh, from those that take part in it. And cricket is the same thing. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been to uh, a few things in Bristol, for instance. They they do a certain amount of Opera at Clifton College cricket ground and, and things like that. So as you say, it is uh, it's uh, it's a perfect match. And, and actually, I think the uh, the, the prospect, assuming that we have decent weather in the summer, of going to, to, to Wormsley and, and seeing the, the very best opera it would be fantastic. It's a wonderful setting to play cricket in and, and really it just fits so perfectly with this and allows the cricketers to perform to their best of their ability. Uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, I think that when I've been speaking to overseas players, at various times, it happens all the time, they, they can play practice matches at Wormsley as a lead-up to the test series, and they all remark that it is one of the more, most beautiful grounds they've ever played in. Well, we've got a busy evening ahead of us, so I won't keep you too long, but uh, I can't really let you go too far without a uh, comment on the quite fantastic performance by England just recently, winning the Ashes in Australia. Uh, well, you, you've, um, Gladstone Small is also here tonight, played the last time it happened, uh, some years ago. There has been a period of time when Australia have had uh, a stellar team containing you know, the Warns, the McGraths, you know, the best players in the world of their generation. Shane Warne may be the best spin bowler the world has ever seen. That was likely to come to an end. There's been a lot of pain inflicted on English teams during that period of time. Uh, so to have, starting with winning in 2005 and then 2009, uh, and then also to win in Australia is, is, is brilliant. But, and the preparation, relationship between Strauss and Flower, uh, and uh, the players, you know, we didn't just beat them, we annihilated them really. Apart from Perth, uh, you know, when you defeat uh, Australia by, by an innings, as many times as we have, that's, that's just not a marginal victory, that is absolutely annihilation. So I am like anybody who is in English cricket looking for as many Australians as they can possibly bring and ask about their health. Well, that's, that's very, very good. I'm sure they're, uh, they're happy to, to answer one way or the other. But um, you've been, obviously been on cricket uh, for many years in different roles as well. Where would you put this England cricket team at the moment? And just briefly looking ahead, where could they be in four years' time? Well, I think it would be quicker than that. I think they can easily be ranked number one in the world. Uh, there are two sides above them, uh, India and South Africa. Uh, India, I think, again, fantastic team, but they're... The, the, again, their magnificent batsmen of Sewag, Tendulkar, Dravid, Laxman are all coming to the end of their careers. And all sides go, go through transition. Um, I'm just slightly surprised about Australia that they have no, no forward playing at all. So they could be in the doldrums for quite a long time. So, you know, there won't be any, you know, tears in this country about that sort of thing. But, you know, South Africa are a pretty one-dimensional team. Uh, so... You know, I think we, we cover all the bases. We've got the best spinner in the, in the world at this present stage. Uh, but one thing that's impressed me is that we've often been accused of being a pretty lumbering team and not being very good in the field. We're the best fielding team in, in the world, and that's down to Andy Flower, a, a no-compromise situation about fitness. So, uh, I, you know, people have quite rightly geared their attentions to, um, to the Ashes. But in the end, Australia are the fifth-ranked team in the world. They're no longer number one. The number one team is here next summer, together with the number like Sri Lanka up there as well. So uh, I think the summer is going to be really, really good. And I think the series against India, if we have some decent weather, it'll be fantastic. You mentioned that uh, Sachin Tendulkar may be coming to the end of his career. This could well be his, uh, his last series. And uh, what a treat for, for fans in England. Uh, yeah, it will be, because he has been a fantastic performer. He's played since he's 16. But the same thing about Raul Dravid. I can remember meeting him at Lyft in, in London when he was about to make his debut for India. Uh, and Laxman, again, has been a fantastic player for them. Sewag is probably the most destructive opening batsman the world's seen. He's ranked, he's ranked number one in the world as a batsman. So, 
Uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a f full on series. Uh, but I think in English conditions we can beat them. So we beat them. Then I don't know how the, ra the rankings work, but we're only going up, and everybody else is going down. Well, last word then. I think really, uh, Paul Collingwood, a uh, man you've seen play over say, many years, a uh, fantastic ambassador for English cricket. Yeah, uh, Mike Atherton wrote an article suggesting um, that I was a person who identified him at the beginning. Uh, the more that I was involved in that particular role, you were driven by the people. Who is the person who's, uh, you know, when the chips are down, who is going to get the 40 or 50 that's going to win the game? Uh, it would be a difficult time for him at present. Uh, I think he retired from, uh, well, I know that he, you know, retired from Test match cricket and retired on a basis of, uh, you know, he's played in three winning Ashes teams uh, in a space of not a long period of time, in six years. Um, and there aren't too many people who can say that in, a, in, a, in the last 20, 30 years. Uh, he'd find it difficult being out of the one-day one day game, but uh, he'll, uh, he'll pester the management and try and sort of get himself back in the team. And I see that the way he plays, low wickets in the subcontinent, that, that's his strength. Not only with the bat, a little bit of the bowling, still one of our best fielders. So what a perfect way to go out in the winter, win the Ashes and win the World Cup and say thank you very much. Well, on that note, David Groening, thank you very much. Thank you.